Hello, my friends, patriots, American patriots. I'm a patriot, you're a patriot. My name is Tom with WeaponsEducation.com talking about a really serious subject. Shot placement, okay? We've all got our pistols. This one happens to be a SIG P226 Elite. Beautiful, beautiful pistol, beautiful. I gotta do more videos on this. But now let's talk about something serious because of the past decade plus plus years I've had this channel, I would say like a good pretty high percentage of the, of the comments is just like shop placement, shop placement, shop placement. And I agree. I agree. You have to be a good shot to defend your life in self-defense. And that's what this is all about, this video. Shot placement. What do people really mean when they say shot placement? What do you want to shoot the person? So this is a serious subject. Now let me tell you a little bit about my training, and that is at least 300 hours of intense training of running and gunning outdoors, clearing rooms, clearing homes, running in the dirt, running 50 feet fast forward, 30 feet backwards, 50 feet to the left, and then shooting at moving targets from the prone position, hitting the dirt and shoot, all that type of stuff. Now, once you do that, then you can legitimately put a comment out and say, well, I think I'm pretty good at shot placement, but still, let's talk about it, okay? Because most people, which is great, and I love it, they're at the range, they're shooting at a target, okay? Here's your average target and it's sitting there still and it's not shooting back at you you know where I'm going with this it's not shooting back at you and you're going boop 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 you're trying to stay in that triangle oh great boop boop let's move it back 20 feet let's move it from 20 to 25 to 30 feet oh I'm doing even better I'm further away okay now that's that's good with, with standing at an indoor range and shooting at paper, what I've learned for me, in my opinion, is excellent for learning your gun, learning the recoil, making sure it cycles properly, figuring out the ammo, and make sure your grip is accurate. So it's got its good purpose for shooting at a piece of paper indoors. And that's that's what I'm stuck to here in South Florida. I live down here in Palm Beach County, Florida. But when I want to really train, I go up to the Six Sour Academy or other places throughout the country where I could shoot outdoors and get trained by you know people who've been in the military for many years. Uh, the real top echelon of <laughs> you know Army Rangers, people like that. So, with that said, let's talk about shot placement. Okay. The first thing a, a professional trainer is going to tell you is when you're in danger of your life being taken away from you, you want to shoot in this area of the human body of the person coming at you. This is all the organs, okay? We get it's kind of a gruesome thing here, but we have to be realistic. You hunters, this came to mind. You hunters know if you're, especially if you're shooting with a bow and arrow or a crossbow, you know what shot placement means when you're shooting a deer. You know the exact spot where the so-called pump station is on that deer. You're trained to know it. You know if you're shooting a turkey with an arrow that the size of the pump station. The, all the internal organs are the only the size of a softball on a huge turkey, you know, a 25 pound turkey. And you get the size, that's just, that's your shot placement. Okay, that's kind of easier to do when you, you know, you're sitting in a tree and it's not easy, but at least, you know, the, nothing's shooting back at you. So hunters really know about shot placement. They're the, they're, they know more than anyone. They're, they're trained to know that before they go hunting. But for us with self-defense, 
shop placement seems to be a, such a common such a common response to so many situations and all these videos I do I'm like is this person trained properly so let's start with this where if you're shooting a headshot and the person is 20 feet away where are you gonna aim at this whole portion now the answer is no because the skull is designed to protect the brain and it's possible for any round I don't care the caliber to ricochet off a skull now, this is only if your life is in serious danger or someone's got a gun pointing at you and they're ready to kill you 20 30 feet away you want to shoot at this right here right below the eyebrows the triangle it's known as the triangle down here and right below the nose okay now I did a video on a man who was shot within five feet six times five plus six times he was shot in the face twice in the chest one in the gut one in the forearm and the other in the shoulder if I remember it perfectly you can search that on my channel man shot six times weapons education or search it anywhere and you'll see that video he lived okay nine millimeter so the point is this triangle in the face is the softest tissue of the whole head all around the man who lived fortunately became my good friend was shot here in the jaw with a nine millimeter at close range and the bullet went through and, and the teeth stopped it around here and he lived from here to here and he was also shot here above his organs he was shot here above his organs and he was shot in other places and he lived and it's a cool video on to see how he finally survived that it was a mass shooting he was the victim of uh, a mass shooting but he was the only survivor of, of six or seven people with that said let's keep talking about I don't want no one to think they're tough guys and thinking they can always just shoot someone so when you're aiming at someone where do you want to aim let's talk about what the pros say not only my trainers but Chris Kyle you know who Chris Kyle is one of the best snipers who ever lived right he wrote a very good book and read it <laughs> Chris Kyle's book right before he died he was murdered and or you can listen to it it's phenomenal and he talks about he would only shoot for this area he goes I want to quote unquote I, I want to shoot with or there's more meat this area the chest now keep in mind you're used to shooting on a still target and I want your comments below on what you think about shot placement I mean are you that qualified I personally think I'm pretty well qualified and smart enough to know that I'm not gonna shoot at someone's head even if they're if, well if they're three to five feet I would say maybe yes depending on the circumstances if I'm backing up and I'm tripping over a curb and I got a gun against my head I'm just going for the body or if they're 30 40 feet away I'm shooting for the chest too also usually that's the best option it's pretty rare that you want to shoot for that little triangle so here's what you're doing at the range you're shooting at this still piece of paper and good job keep doing it it's got its purpose I mentioned that in the beginning of the video but what happens when this if this is a human or if it's four humans okay, in each corner one on each corner going like this coming at you and they're all over the place and they're backing up and they're going forward and they're backing up and boom, boom, you hear bullets going all around and you're backing up and then, and then you hit a garage door you hit a curb and you fall down and you're on your knees and you're scuffed up and you're and you're all frazzled and you get boom you're shooting their boat what's your shot placement going to be like that's why people don't like to hear about training I've learned in my videos it's just okay I know you guys train and you want to train but generally speaking 
you got to give yourself at least one day a year at a place like the Six Sour Academy. I'll just use that as, as, a, as an example. You got to give yourself at least maybe two days a year. Two days because you probably got to fly there most likely. So give yourself two eight hour days a year. Is that asking a lot? I know it's pricey and all that. You got to pay for your air, air flare. You got to pay for the ammo when you know, they supply the ammo. And then you got to pay for the class. But I tell you what, you come back a new person when you shoot outdoors at moving targets and they got you, they got you shooting at three of these at once, moving like this, and you're running 40 feet forward, then you're coming back 30 feet, and then, they, and then you're turning around, and then you're then all these type of things, and then you got to hit them, boom, 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 boom. Now that'll test you and see how your shot placement is. And that'll teach you well, what's going to happen in a real case scenario? There's a movie I just watched on Netflix, and, and it's called Felon. Um, felon, just Felon. It'll give you chills if you do something wrong in a self-defense shooting. So let me bring this into play. Let me just add this to the video. The point is, okay, you're in your home, and... You're sleeping with your wife, you're 23, you got a perfect record, you got a perfect life, everything's perfect, and someone breaks in your house. You hear the glass break, you know someone's in your house. In this case, in the movie, Felon, he grabbed the baseball bat, I'm just telling you the first 10 minutes, you should watch it because it'll teach you a lot. You don't want to go to jail. He grabs the baseball bat, oh my gosh, someone's in my house. We would all do the same thing, or grab our pistol, we would do something, right? But do you pull that trigger? That's the question. Do you pull that trigger? And in the movie, what he did was, the guy just got his wallet and got nervous and ran towards the front door, and simultaneously as he's running out the front door to get away, the guy with the baseball bat, the homeowner who woke up, he's tired, he's asleep, he's only got 30% of his cognitive abilities. Think of it, when you wake up out of a sound sleep, realistically, you're not 100% there. And he just hits him with the bat, but the guy turned his head, he gets hit, and he died. Boom! Five feet in front of his front door, and in the movie, you'll see what happens, the guy got um, charged with murder. And then you got to see what happens to him when he goes to prison. None of us want to go to prison. So don't think. I guess where I'm going with this is because all these comments, well, I'm, shot placement's all that matters. Now, what matters is getting trained outdoors at least two days a year. Give yourself those two days a year. There's got to be something in your state that, that does that. Locally, somewhere you can go. If it's not the Six Hour Academy, of course, they accept any gun. They don't care what gun you bring. They'll train you, or any facility in the nation. They don't care what gun you bring. Just go get trained at least two days a year, and, and then shoot again. Do the If you're a beginner, start with the beginner classes. But if you're advanced, like I am, I tell you, once you start, once you start doing what I said earlier, and you're shooting at stuff moving like this, and then you're moving like that, it's kind of it's kind of eerie. It's kind of like oh my gosh, and then you got to envision bullets coming at you. But when you get good at hitting them, then that gives you the confidence on how to get your eyes on those sights that quick. And that's the key: is getting your eyes on the sights that quick. My trainer taught us something really really good. His name is Dylan at the Six Sour Academy. Thumbs up to you, Dylan. I don't even know if you still work there. But what he taught us was, he goes, you know, if you took a gun and you flipped it, and then somehow it went off, that bullet's going to go wherever the sights are pointed, no matter what, no matter how fast it's going under 360. And then he goes, let me, let me prove something to you. And he turns his pistol upside down, 100 yards out, 100 yards out, at a metal little six inch little piece of metal this is a hard shot like impossible because i'm going to prove to you that the bullet goes exactly where the sights are pointed he holds his pistol upside down he did that and he hits it like this bing because he's good he knows how to get his eyeballs on the sights 
That is the point of shot placement. Don't pull that trigger. Do not pull that trigger unless your eyeballs have the front sight and rear sights perfectly aligned. Even if it takes you an extra half a second to a second. You got to do it. You can't just shoot unless it's like within two feet and you have no choice. I know there's those circumstances. But generally, generally speaking, before you take a shot, make sure your sights are in sight. You're lined up. You're zeroed in at the person, at the pertinent spot. And don't forget about body armor, okay? If they're wearing body armor, don't forget about the neck. That's a good spot to shoot someone to save your life. And please do not pull the trigger in any circumstance unless your life is in danger. You can't shoot someone for trespassing. I know in Texas you're going to say you can shoot someone because of stolen property. Okay, go tell the DA after you've got a dead corpse in your... In your I don't want to deal with that. You know, I, just, I don't want to deal with it. I'd rather just, you know, trespassing, you stole something, I'd rather just wake up the next day, oh, there's no corpse in my body, in my, in my, on my property. Don't pull the trigger unless your life is in danger. Unless you are going to die. And then if you do, we're talking about shot placement, do your best to learn on how to get your eyeballs on those sites before you pull the trigger. Okay? That's kind of what I wanted to throw out there. Okay, all this kind of stuff. Human beings coming at you. Okay, shot placement. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Put your comments in below. And hopefully you'll say, you know what? I'm going to really try to dry fire tonight. And, and figure out how to, before I pull the trigger, get my sights lined up before I pull the trigger. That's the goal. That is really the goal. I got so good at it to the point where I can go like bing, 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 bing. Here, I'll show you a little clip of me shooting from a moving car, which I do not recommend you do. The whole idea of this class was don't shoot from a moving car because you can shoot innocence. And by the way, I should have said this in this video, you can shoot innocence if you're shooting at the head. It's just too small of a spot to be shooting at. Shoot at center mass to save your life only. I'll show you this video of me shooting. I did real well on this. I was proud of myself from a moving car, but don't shoot from a moving car. That was the idea of the class because you're going to shoot innocence. Most likely it's at a mall or something. And what about the shots I missed? Where are those rounds going? Okay? Let's watch that. And thank you for watching the WeaponsEducation.com. Subscribe. Ring the bell. I care about all of you American patriots. And I'm here for you in the new studio. Thank you. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I'm coming here personally, quarterly, for the rest of my life. This place is just too amazing. Too amazing. Let's get his take on it. That's Matt. Yeah, he's, he's a good job. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Matthew, come here. How was it? What could you tell me? What, what could I expect? Very difficult. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Any tips for me? Yeah. Uh, hold on to the gun tight. Don't get. Don't let it get rattled. Uh, make sure you bring the gun in when you reload. You don't want How to drop the mag out. You point straight up. I, I would still point it down range. You were pointing I brought, down range. Brought my gun inward so the. So it drops inside the, the car, reload it up close. Point, don't point it uh, down that way, down range, and reload it up close. That way, oh, it you, either down range or straight up. Is I'm what sure you're that'd saying. be fine too. Yes, yeah, as long as it's in safe direction. But yeah. yeah, it's really hard when he starts swerving around. Your gun's going all over. Here I go. See how I do. Smell the brakes on that thing? <laughs>